Hello, I'm Fox. Um, I wanted to catch everyone up on the uh, Wheel Rider progress. Uh, yeah, so just to remind you, I've been working on um, making my own motherboard for the Wheel Rider typewriter. Um, I think it'll open up a lot of really fun possibilities. Uh, the first and most obvious step was to um, kind of get uh, breakout board versions of the parts that I thought might help. So I got some Trinamic stepper motor drivers, um, TM21, TMC2130s, and I got uh, a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is the RP2040 uh, chip. Um, yeah, so first here is the first little experiment that I, I did uh, with both of those things together. Here is a Raspberry Pi Pico. Here is an upside down uh, Trinamic TM2130 uh, breakout board. And this, whoop. And this is a uh, two phase stepper motor that I borrowed out of a Prusa kit I have not put together yet. So if I plug this in to USB here and power it, Sure enough, the motor moves. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, so I can tell, you can see the uh, LED blinking. It looks solid to me. Um, that is a camera shutter thing, I suppose. Uh, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, so these breakout boards, I bought the spy version thinking I wanted the option. And everybody who is using things like this, um, seem to just hook it up with a step and direction wire and that was it they just pulsed it and it went however on these there are let's see I have another one I can I can show there is a tiny little uh, pad let's see if we can see that here so this little uh, pad right here is um, one side goes to ground and one side goes to the uh, spy configuration pin in the bottom corner here of the chip. And if you, if this is not bridged, then it is in a mode where it expects some configuration data to be sent over spy. If you bridge this, the spy pins turn into configuration pins. So here, what I have is uh, configuration, is that one and three, I think, uh, tied to the positive voltage rail uh, to put it in the mode that I want it to be in so that it spins in this way. So the next thing I'm gonna do is very delicately try and hook this uh, little rat's nest up to the typewriter with its own power supply. Okay, so first things first, uh, when I went to actually wire up the stepper motors, here's a, an image I showed uh, in the last video of the platen stepper, and um, I assumed, and again it was like just an assumption here, that the coils were these two pairs, uh, they, they weren't. Instead, it's for some reason the first and third and the second and fourth. Um, this doesn't really matter. I, I should have checked with a meter before I just kind of plugged everything in. Um, it didn't seem like anything was harmed. There was a loud kind of kathunk as I as I did that. Um, I quickly turned off the power and later everything seemed to be totally fine. So yeah, it seems like no harm, no foul in this case. Uh, next. So the actual test setup I used here is a, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico here, and then here's the Trinamic driver surrounded by all of the um, wires that it, it's, it needs. Here's my very cool power supply connector, which is just a couple wires stuffed into the 36 volt and zero volt uh, pins on this connector. Um, and currently this is wired up to the, uh, the platen stepper motor that we saw uh, right back over there, and uh, let's see what happened. So it, it totally worked. Uh, you can see like it's turning extremely slowly here. Um, 
but that's all right. There's, uh, you know, just more tests are, are needed. And in fact, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but yeah, this totally worked. And then uh, next up, I was, let's say, brave enough to try and connect it to the, uh, the carriage. And so that looks like, looks like this. Um, if I start this, you'll see that it goes honestly at a pretty good clip. I had been working on the, um, the speed a little bit at that point. Um, but right now I want to jump a bit into, uh, some other experiments I had done. So I was realizing that the motors were acting in a way that I wasn't really expecting at first. And what, what was happening is they could go much faster than... I was getting them to go just by starting them correctly. So, uh, you know, the, the rotor inside has a bunch of mass and it doesn't want to just immediately go full bore um, forward. So instead, you can, if you manage the acceleration well, you can actually get them to go at a kind of ridiculous clip. Um, so what I'm going to show now is I set up a function generator to send pulses to the dynamic driver instead of the uh, RP2040 uh, because uh, it's easier just to kind of grab the jog wheel on that and start uh, sweeping the frequency up um, instead of reprogramming. And I wanted to see how fast it could go. Uh, and I also wanted to see um, like what, you know, the, how much a difference the acceleration made. Um, so here's that. So if I start slowly ramping this up, we can actually get this motor to go at a really good clip. So let's see how quick we can get it to go. I also don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but it, it sure does make some sounds extremely high-pitched sounds as we go faster and faster. Also the current draw, which I don't have in shot here, stays pretty low. And we're gonna try and pay attention here to when it finally stalls. But, uh, geez, yeah, this is going pretty quickly here. It's just, <laughs> okay, there we go. So we're gonna roll this way, way, way down and bring it kind of back. Well, actually, that's what I wanted to show you. So if I go from a kilohertz pulses to two, it just stalls. Um, and so it turns out, you know, acceleration is really important for these things. Um, like these jumps are also probably too big to get up to where we were, which I totally lost track of. Six something? Yeah, that, all the way down to five that. So we can get, and I mean, this makes sense, right? It's a, a rotating magnetic field. And by being really sort of delicate with how we're bringing that up to speed, we also have the inertia of the rotor behind us here. And so we can get up to some pretty screaming high speeds here as long as we're careful about, oh, just turn it off. <laughs> as long as we're careful about it um, and about how quickly we're bringing up that acceleration curve. So as, as you even saw, like just jumping from one to two kilohertz in the pulses was enough to stall it. And certainly, even if I wound this back down to something, you know, we went way past. If I tried to just bring the power back here, um, let's see, oh, this is still totally cool to the touch. So just to show you, I'll bring the power back. Nothing. I, I don't know if this microphone is gonna pick it up, but what I hear is an incredibly high pitched squealing sound um, and it doesn't move at all. So yeah, just something to keep in mind as you're designing your stepper, stepper motor drive algorithms. Okay, so that's all I've got. Uh, I've got some exciting projects coming up in the next uh, couple of videos. Got the ROM adapter board 
showing up. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to archive and uh, reload that. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and I've got some stuff for driving the hammer coil uh, in the typewriter uh, also uh, coming up next on the to-do list. So thank you, and I will see you next time. Bye.